Hey guys, it's your horror virgin Todd here. I just wanted to let you know that this movie, It Follows, is a very heavy movie. It does have some very heavy themes, and if it bothers you to hear about things like sexual assault, self-harm, depression, suicide, I wanted to warn you, we definitely do talk about that in this episode. And the episode is heavy, it's emotional, it's as heartwarming as it is heartbreaking, but there are still a lot of laughs, and it's really awesome, guys. You'll love it, I promise, enjoy. This episode brought to you by Audible.com. <laughs> You're the worst. Audibletrial.com slash horror virgin for 30 days free and a book to get you started. Jen, what is your recommendation this week? Okay, so I've been listening to this really awesome podcast called Ghost in the Burbs, and the per- the lady, Liz Sauer, who does it. What's it about? It's about ghosts in the suburbs of Massachusetts. But the woman, Liz Sauer, who... <laughs> So it's not just a clever name? No, it's not. That's what it's about. So she has a book on Audible called Claire, which is one of the stories Wait, from- the chick who does the podcast? Yeah. Has her own book on Audible? She does, yeah. Does she read it herself? She does, yeah. It's awesome. That is sort of awesome. It's I mean, really I haven't cool. heard it, but that whole, that's awesome. Like, so anyways, it's called Claire, and it's an extended story from some of the stories on the podcast, and I love it. It's great. All right, guys. That was your plug and Audible ad? Yeah. Audibletrial.com <laughs> slash horror virgin for 30 days free and a book to get you started. <laughs> this episode also brought to you by Nick, Nick B. B. Ooh, that was nice. Slash free trial, Nick B. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to try your very own Nick B, go to nickbtrial.com slash horror virgin. Nick, I need your permission. I need to know what the B stands for. You just send it in, please. Or tweet at me. Nick, Nick B, B, send me fun facts so we can read them about you. Oh, my oh, God. Nick I B. love this. Hey, I think Nick B might want us to promote God Country also. He you didn't know what? That's probably true. He tell yeah. us that. So <laughs> if you want to check out God Country, that we assume Nick B would like you to check out. <laughs> God Country is a movie being made by Jacob and Luke from Modern Horrors right now. Yes, it is. You've actually heard Jacob and Luke both talk about it as guests on this show. So if you want to donate, check out our Twitter feed or their Twitter feed for links to where you can donate. They're currently crowdfunding. Nick B, I hope it's okay that we promoted that. And but please just, send us fun facts about you. All right, guys. If you want please. your very own Patreon shout out, go to <laughs> patreon.com slash horrorvirgin and sign up. we got a lot of great stuff up there. You'll be glad you did. But Look at that theme music, that Nick B. <laughs> Roll that beautiful B theme music. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had told me that during this movie they were gonna be reading a Kindle clamshell. I would have told you that you're real dumb. <laughs> All information comes from vaginas. <laughs> it's women in horror month, Mikey! Welcome to the horror version, everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen. Hello, I am Mikey. And I'm your horror virgin Todd. And this week we watched It Follows. It follows. Yes, this was our February listener request. Oh, yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. We asked for strong feminine movies, yep. and we ended up with this for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in a real goofy mood. Yeah, yeah you are. And this is the worst movie to I be know. in a goofy this, mood to talk it, about. This movie is, I took notes about the metaphor <laughs> of sexual <laughs> assault, and now I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen this movie before tonight? Yeah. I watched it. I think I rented it when it came out. So yeah, you waited until it was out of theaters? Mm-hmm. Did you see it in theaters? I didn't see it in theaters. No, I saw it when it came out. I thought it might right. be about a year after it came out. Don't think it had a wide release, did it? I think it had a limited release. It, had, it started with a limited release and then it did really well. So they gave it a wide release. And I remember when it came out, everybody was talking about it. Of course, I didn't see it. I honestly was not thrilled that this one was the one that got picked. But now I'm really glad that it was the one that got picked. Why is For that? reasons that we'll talk about. Oh. Well, let's just get into this fucking movie. Because I, I have some thoughts, but I'm going to save them, I think, until the end. This movie is okay. pretty heavy. It's a heavy movie. It's This is a movie that is easy to see very lightly and you could also see it very heavily. It kind yeah, of so you depends. could watch it for what it is or you could project a lot of shit that's happened to you on it and then it becomes a very heavy movie. Or you can Whoa, use yeah. it as a vessel to help you work through some issues of your sure, own. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. That's what I mean by project it. Right. Like, right, exactly. yeah, yeah. I, I haven't had it. I mean, I saw what it was trying to say, I think, throughout. Hey, can we get into this fucking movie, guys? Yeah, let's do that. That's nonsense. a great idea, Jen. <laughs> we start with Annie running in from That's the, the main character's name? No, no that's, that's the first girl's character. Shit, I, I, I completely <laughs> forgot about the first character. I'm sorry. Because she she runs out on like what she, she slept in, and it looks like it's sort of early morning. Uh, but, it does. But she's also wearing high heels. She's yeah. wearing red heels. If you're going out for a run in what you slept in, 
first off, sleep at gym clothes. Secondly, yep. have Reeboks by your bed or yep. anything you can run in. Both. Wait, am I immune from this movie because I'm a virgin? Yeah. Yes. That's Nailed how it, it works. All right, so we start with Annie running in the street and we hear footsteps. And so Annie's wearing kind of- Do we of, hear footsteps? We do, I, yeah. Okay. I, was, what? I was listening for it. We hear, you have footsteps. No, because there's a time when she stands- no, I trust you because I didn't know her name was Annie. She oh, there was a time. I, I assumed it was her dad because her dad followed her out into the yard. So and I thought it was be. just her dad walking out behind her, but you might be right. She's walking and she's wearing like night clothes and and red heels, which I imagine were just the closest shoes. That's how you know they're night clothes, Jen. Working on the night clothes. So yeah, she's in the street. um, (laughs) She's got her red shoes on. She's standing still in the street and then we can hear footsteps that we don't see and she's looking for someone. And if you haven't seen the movie- Oh, she's looking right at something. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, She's running away. (laughs) It's it's like early morning, like dawn. (laughs) Mikey bringing the facts to this yeah. episode. She kind of runs in a circle and then she runs back into her house and then goes and gets her purse and drives away. And then she drives to the beach or whatever. It's probably a lake, really. Yeah, the next time we see her, which is the very next scene, she's sitting, her car is um, parked at a beach and the headlights are on. And It she's looked like sitting. it was still running. It did, yeah, and the door's still open. And it was night, so she's been running all day. She drove while driving. All night. So she gets to the be- her car's right up on the beach. She's sitting in the beam of the headlights on the water's edge. And then she calls her parents and she's like, I'm sorry, I love you. I don't know why I'm such a jerk sometimes. I just want you to know I love you. Um, and then kind of starts looking at her car and looking off. And if you've seen this movie before, you know what you're looking for. But if you haven't seen it before, you're like, I what the know. hell is happening? A lot of people say this movie is like a metaphor for sexual assault, which is I agree with. To me, at this scene, it shows, and this is this is this is going to go some serious places, is that metaphorically, I think that she is giving up, and like maybe even in like a real sense, how a lot of victims uh, commit suicide. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I got from that's, this scene that's too. What yeah. I got from the scene because she was just sick of running, right? Mm-hmm. So it let it get her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She ran out of road. She was just going to sit and wait. She called to say goodbye. That yeah. call was like her, I don't want to say she committed suicide because she didn't, but she just kind of gave up. I feel like that's where the metaphor is going. Yeah. So it cuts to her looking through like her open car door. Mm-hmm. The lights it. are on her. Yeah, sort Into of past it, right. Yeah, yeah. And then it cuts to... There's like I a think look the on next her morning. face. Mm-hmm. And then we see her dead on the beach and we in the light of day and then we pan out you, you see her dead face and you see her foot hanging over her face. Right. And then you pan out to see that her leg has been bent backwards, to, almost torn yeah, off, almost but not completely quite. torn off. You you just have to see it and if you've seen the movie, you know, it's kind of hard to describe. You just got to see that. It's, it's all, real rough, man. I, I did not I didn't like, like it. seeing it. Yeah. It made it's, me squirm for sure. It's disturbing. And immediately we know whatever this monster is, it does fuck her or does it oh my god <laughs> I'm gonna say it doesn't fuck around <laughs> it's immediately you know this movie's full of light moments and you're gonna have a feel good time <laughs> Yeah. The next scene is Jay in the pool, and she's just kind of chilling in her above ground pool, relaxing. Jay, the main character. Jay, the main and character. And she's just sort of like chilling out there. Her sister comes out and talks to her for a second, mm-hmm. and then like the pervs from across the street come yeah. over and are like peering through the fence at her. Yeah, and she kind of laughs it off, and she. And says, she well, she's not. I mean, yeah, she's not wearing anything sexy. She's wearing like a she's one not. piece. I but mean, if you're I 12, liked you her know. in a one. Whoa. I mean, she was looking all right. You yeah. can still be super hot in a one piece. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think at this point, I think it's trying to show us that the pool was like her safe place. She's yeah, there is much definitely there. a theme of bodies of water in this movie. Yeah, yeah, and she always goes to them when she wants to feel safe. And oh, so I'm we bringing see- critical analysis. <laughs> Get ready, world. <laughs> and so we see the boys behind the fence. And sh- we also sh- hear her talk about this date that she's got tonight. And she's oh, yeah, with her it. sister. Yeah. yeah. Is so- it with that guy again? Yeah, yeah. I like him. All right. So the next thing we see is she gets out of the pool and she goes in and she hangs with the kid. Her friends are there. Her mom, I think. We really don't see the mom very much. Nor um, does it matter. We it introduces a few characters like Paul, who is the... Yeah. Paul's uh, the friend. Paul's the friend. Friend's and friend. then The friend zone doesn't exist and we shouldn't push forth that myth um also we meet flatulent friend glasses glasses yeah glasses chick yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't like this work. character because it's like one of those movie cliches where like we're gonna she's take the this. ugly quirky one but she's actually just super she's hot in glasses super, yeah. yeah 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 i'm like that really hot girl's wearing some glasses they could mm-hmm. remake she's all that with her <laughs> right yeah. right she comes out like in the middle of the film they're all running and she's like i'm going to the prom and she takes her glasses off and, and the monster's like oh she gonna get it <laughs> 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 nailed it i feel like that scene was built to be like oh jesus 
disgusting. But instead, we're like, she's pretty cute. You can fart wherever. Yeah, and honestly, like if you're comfortable with your friends, just rip it. I don't right. care. No, well, don't and I do think that. The point like of if this you guys scene, do that here, I don't like that. I don't do that. I'm a lady. Actually, I shouldn't say that because there's nothing wrong with. And farting. also, Mikey, I don't do that. I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I do it. <laughs> but I think the point of this is to establish this yeah, group establish of characters. friends. They're real comfortable with each other, you know. And this is it. Kind of almost seems like it's the younger sister's group of friends that she just kind of hangs out with. Yeah, Jay doesn't seem super connected. Yeah, although I think I don't know. She's. Cl- I, I think, think she's she more connected than, than she does after the date. Yeah, but I think she's just thinking about the date mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But she seems like she's more connected to her family here than she does after she gets sexed. I don't know how to call, how to she refer gets to that. followed. <laughs> sure, before she gets followed. Yeah. Well, I, and I say it that way because yeah. and we'll get there in just a second, but it's consensual sex and then becomes very weird, right? Yes. It quickly goes into what's not okay. Oh, and we get introduced to the uh, shell... Clamshell phone. The, the clamshell uh, Kindle thing. Yeah. The, wh- why? Let's just talk about it right now. That was so dumb, and it was really, really pointless. There was no need to have that. Was that thing ever a no, thing? No, that was never a thing. Because I do know that it was a conscious choice of the director to leave it ambiguous as to the time period and the time of year, because you notice you see him in the pool and then you'll also see scenes where they're wearing coats and hats like it's cold outside. Oh yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, yeah. so I want to say this. I feel like this, whoever this is, and I don't know who wrote and directed this movie, but he seems like a really, 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 really low rent Andrew Nickel and if you guys know Andrew Nickel he wrote Gattaca directed Gattaca he wrote Simone and directed Simone so he like writes and directs his own things and they take Mm. place in a sort of a timeless universe right yeah where it's sort of futuristic past Uh so you can't really tell where it is or and you can't really place it in time and Andrew Nichols does it very well and you can't really tell what year it takes place in but this it's like a really really bad job of trying to do that consistent no. I don't feel like these aspects of the film helped the film. No, they don't. I don't think so either. It didn't take also, me out of the film. The clamshell thing I didn't like. but It I didn't don't... take me out of the film either. I thought it was stupid, but I wasn't like, this whole movie's dumb because of the stupid we clamshell. We all stopped and talked about it, so it did take us out of the film. But, I mean, it didn't ruin it for me. All right, so what happens <laughs> next, everybody? She gets ready for her date. And she goes on the date, more or less, she right? Does. Like that's And we they, see them in line at the movies. So they're standing out in front of the movie theater, right? And they're mm-hmm. playing the Trading Places game, and Eddie Murphy is nowhere to be seen. Yeah. But they, they do... They trade places with them already. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this game, she's like, me and my sister played this growing up. We look into a crowd, and we pick a person to trade places with, and you have to guess who I trade places with. And why? That's a weird game. Seems like it'd be really hard anyway. The and why part would be very difficult for sure. And then also, he looked like a really trashy Pacey from Dawson's Creek. He did. Every episode, Dawson's Creek gets brought up. That's why true. is that? We're just a bunch of Dawson heads. It, I liked it. It's a cultural <laughs> touchstone. You're a bunch of Creek heads? <laughs> creek heads. There it is. Way to go, Todd. So dumb. He didn't even watch the show. I know. I, did I didn't watch anything on CW because I was poor. It wasn't oh. CW back then. Oh, it was the... The double 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 WB. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I never watched it, but I knew I knew what the frog looked like. Smallville for life. Man, I hated Smallville. <laughs> Smallville was so bad. No, I like Smallville, and if you really like Smallville, then you should be able to openly admit to other people that Smallville was terrible. It is terrible, but I it's liked all it. terrible. I prefer Lois and Clark. Oh, oh that was a my good show. God, that Dean was Kane, a good show. Dean Kane, and Terry Hatcher <laughs> Ooh, after uh-huh. she stopped doing B-level porn. Yeah, I met Dean Kane in a bathroom. <gasps> <laughs> 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 no, I went to the Comic Con in Nashville, and he was in there. And I, I mean, I didn't pay to go meet him, but I peed next to him. Yeah, so. if you have to pay anyone, and then they say meet me in the bathroom, <laughs> you're not paying to meet a celebrity. You're paying to meet a sex worker. If they have a, or jean a congressman in that bathroom, get out of there. No, but he was nice. You know, we, we peed next to each other, washed our hands <laughs> next to each other, gave like a nod, like you know, have a good one, Dean Kane. <laughs> Do you use his X-ray vision on you? He didn't have to, did he? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so Which they're in the movie theater. They're in the movie. And I think the Trading Places game comes into play. And we can talk about that in a little bit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because she picked a, a guy who was with a really pretty girl to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. To test him to see if he would rather be on a date with oh, her. Oh, but he pulled the full on scumbag. He knew what she was doing. He was like, no, I want to be that guy with a family. Yeah. He played that game. Yeah, he did. I 
also think Jen, maybe, don't defend him. He's a horrible guy. He the, gave her itfulis. Itfulis. That's it-fulis. really funny. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> I know it is. That's why I said it. Yeah, he But you've never had a guy on a date be like, no, I want Stuber want to settle down and have kids or but whatever. He want to and then be after the you father. gave up the goods. But he chooses the little boy. And I think he chooses the little boy because he's got this weight on him and he wishes he could trade places with this little boy and make different changes in his life. Oh, Boy, I got that too, happened. for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And then they go and sit down in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, and they're still playing the game. And did this? Hang on. Did this movie theater have an organ player? It did have an organ. It did player. have this an organ player. Is such a stupid and poorly written movie. Like that is dumb. But that is all because he's trying to make it seem ambiguous as to what time period it's yeah, from. Yeah. But it's done so badly. There it's is a, so bad. There's a movie theater like this on Dawson's Creek too. Why does back. everything revolve around <laughs> Dawson Screech? It's in the same universe. <laughs> <laughs> Dawson reads off his puka shell Kindle oh at night. God. He does. And I bet at least one character wears a puka shell necklace. All and, characters oh, in Dawson's yeah. Creek. And the main <laughs> character in this goes on the date wearing a puka shell necklace. Oh. It all connects. Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. God. This is Detroit Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Dawson's Detroit. Great Dawson's Lake. <laughs> Nailed it. Because Detroit's on the Great Lake. Great. Oh, is that why? Yeah, we got oh. it. Great Dawson's Lake. What? Oh my God, I'm going to use that like Great Scott from now on. <laughs> Great Dawson's Lake! <laughs> <laughs> Can we get back into this fucking movie? Yeah, so they're sitting down now and they're still playing the game and he's trying to guess who she would trade places with and he guesses the woman in the yellow dress and we turn around and we don't see any woman in a yellow dress and so then he, she says, I, are you tricking me? I don't see a woman and he He's like, no, dude, it's right, right there at the entrance. It's, it's right, right there. there. Yeah. So then he kind of panics and says, we got to go. Yeah. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't feel good. I got to go. He whoa. throws his popcorn up. And they go out the other entrance. She thinks he may have seen an ex or something. Which yeah. Or someone he doesn't want her to see. Right. Because he's not like panicking to the level that it would freak her out and say, take me home right now. No, no but he is panicking a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. she yeah. knows something's up. He's definitely acting like a shady guy acts shady. Yeah. So yeah, they rush back to their car and that's the end of the date, right? No. no, they go to a restaurant. That's right. They go right, to a diner, right. yeah. And we kind of pan out yeah, as they're and you talking see someone and walking. you see somebody walking toward them. Yeah. And so this is when, if you've seen the movie before, you're picking out a lot more of this stuff. That I mean, I hadn't seen this movie before, but I did watch the trailer for Patreon. Yeah. So I sort of saw it on my first watch through. Yeah. So the diner scene ends and then it goes to Sister and Jay, yeah. the main character, walking. Mm-hmm. And Sister then this smoking. is when they're in their coats, too. Yeah, so they're walking, talking about the date, just saying, like, He yeah, was I acting weird. He was. I had fun, but he was acting and weird. And so this is when, if you're trying to piece this timeline together, um, which I didn't spend too much time doing, but they clearly been out before because she noticed him acting weird. So I don't think this was his their first date last night. Maybe second or third. Yeah, I would guess third or fourth, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And she does, and by she, I mean the sister. The sister does ask Jay, the main character, did you guys, like, you do know. it? And then she's like, no. No, she said I would, but he was acting weird. Oh, I thought she said that he would, but I, I don't know. Either way, they, they imply did. that it, 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 it's going to happen, but like yeah, it, that was not yet. The timing was not great. I don't. Okay, so knowing what we know, he's playing the long game here. Like, what is he doing? Because he's probably fucked just some rando, and then they immediately got killed, and it came back to him right away. So he's playing the long game because he's trying a different strategy. He's trying to make her kind of an ally in the fight and let her know what's happening. So she's now fighting. So he. Gets a longer amount of time off before it comes back to him. After the last time we see him in the movie, it's not looking for him at all. I get it. I get it. Yeah, no, but I don't think this is the first. So I think what this also tells us is he's been dealing with this for a while. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the girl at the very beginning was someone he probably slept with and didn't tell right. what was going on. Yeah. So maybe he had because she did sort of know. Yeah. Was that the girl from the picture they find in the in the book later on? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yeah. maybe. That would have been better. I mean, I think it could be. I'd have to go back and like look at them, but yeah, it might be. And then they have their second date and they're making their out. Their second date that we see in the movie. It's probably right. their fourth or fifth date. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The it second implies date that the they movie. have gone on multiple dates. Yes. I, I think. Mm, yeah, but it's still kind of a new relationship because. Because they go... This but he met the sister, which is not like a one or two date kind of deal. Yeah, I don't know. But their second date is at an abandoned apartment complex in their parking lot and also the woods. You don't do so, that? So, big red flags. <laughs> Wait, yes. where do you go on fourth don't. dates? 
You go to the Nippers Corner Theater, walk up behind that back hill, and make out with Ryan Philippi. That's right. I mean, all of this is alleged. What's it like to get to the fourth date? (laughs) He goes and parks the car, and it's just so romantic because it's on this abandoned gravel lot, and how would you not fall in love with a guy who takes you there? (laughs) They don't even do anything on this date other than have sex, right? We don't see them do anything else. They probably do something else. I mean, I will say this. I've I've been on dates I've down in a car before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say I've been on dates that started out with us driving somewhere to have sex. Yeah. Although I didn't then chloroform her in the back seat. Yep, so let's talk about what happened. Allegedly. Next. No, no, I haven't done that. <laughs> oh. I have not done that. Let's state that for the record. Yeah. <laughs> You're, we're, we're watching a horror movie, so we, we expect something bad to happen. But people go to abandoned parts of town in cars to have sex all the time. Honestly, my spot was trying to find a place where they're building houses at night because there's no construction workers there. And you can just pull up close to a house that's being built, and you got all the privacy you need to bang one out. Mm. And you can steal some copper wire, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Buy some meth. The sweet spot for a date to check with meth. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, jeez. I have an apartment, so I don't have to like worry about this. And I don't have a right. roommate. Right. These yeah. are pro- these are problems I used to have but don't have anymore. Right. It's fun to hook up in a car sometimes. It yeah, is. And I is. have lived with someone and we had had sex in a parking lot. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. It's, because I mean, they're dangerous. a little adventurous. You, you know got to feel that horsepower. Uh, you refer to your penis as horsepower? No, I refer to my Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, I was no, real no, no, no. I like to set their expectations no. very low. So when, when, <laughs> it, when the magic does happen, they're like, oh, okay, that's adequate. Great. You under promise, over deliver. <laughs> exactly. I know the game, Mikey. <laughs> so anyway, he finishes a little quickly for my taste and then goes to the trunk as she. She's playing with baby's breath <laughs> outside talking, the door. Yeah, she's kind of dreamingly laying in the back of the car, looking at the baby's breath on the ground, not paying attention to yeah. what he's doing. Talking about, like, all she really wants is someone who'll sit in a car and hold hands with her. Yeah, she's pillow talking for one as he, like, opens the trunk. Red mm-hmm. flag. Pillow yes. talking for one, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I, and I said this during the movie. If I had sex with someone in the back seat and they immediately get up and go to their trunk... I'm paying a lot of attention to what they're doing currently. Especially if you are in an abandoned parking lot in the middle of the woods. N- yeah, exactly. Yeah. I do my best thinking right after, so nothing would get pulled on me. Now, look, we are not in I any way saying she deserves what happens to oh, her. Oh, no. Whoa. No. No, 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 no. But these are all red flags. Absolutely. Yes. He's he still talking, and he comes, and he kind of lays on top of her and is kissing her kind of on the back and being romantic and then all of a sudden he like chloroforms her in the face and it's kind of like drawn out like it's a realistic it's a tense scene there's no music you hear every yeah. bit yeah. of the struggle mm-hmm. you feel uncomfortable it and it does go on a little bit longer than it you would want it to long. and he is upset about it too alright so I have thoughts about this next scene because she is tied to a wheelchair yes in, in her what, underwear I, what is a parking structure right yes I have a legitimate question okay this guy did a horrible thing infecting her with it right yes mm-hmm. do you think he feels like he's doing her a favor by tying her to the chair and explaining absolutely what is not. the premise of the movie? Absolutely not. He's tying her to a chair to explain it to give himself some more time. This okay, is yeah. all yes. selfish stuff. This yeah, is where yeah. the whole metaphor comes in because the whole act of having sex with her, chloroforming her, and giving her it has nothing to do with her and all about him and his and Yeah, yeah. No, I needs. agree. Yeah. I think that the reason he's doing this is because he gave it to other people and he realized it does not buy him that much time because right. they have no idea what's going on. So he's trying to give her the best chance of survival... No, he's trying but to give himself no. well, the Well, yeah, but because he doesn't to want to come back on himself. her. He, uh, to right, come back right, on him. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows if by sleeping with her, he has increased her likelihood of death. And I think he feels like he's giving her at least a chance to fight it off. I think that's what he's telling himself to try to make him feel be- himself feel oh, better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I do think I'm he's trying. I'm giving you a chance yeah. rather than just sleeping with her and letting her con- carry on. And No, re- but he already tried it from the first scene. I think this is all 100% selfish. Me too. He, he oh, yeah. He's trying to the wheelchair. Selfish. He, I don't think he feels bad. I don't think he cares. I think the only reason he ties her up and explains his everything is to maximize his own benefit from it and fulfill all the needs he has. I mean, I, I think that I think fits that's more true. into the metaphor we're going to go into later. Because I think he's a victim, too. I agree with that. But I think he's doing this, and I think he feels like he's doing her a favor, I even though I too. think he's really doing it to make sure he has as much time as he can. I but think even, it's both. Even if he is a victim, he makes a clear choice here to victimize someone else. True. Oh, yeah. I'm not excusing what he did. I didn't buy into his confliction when I watched the film. You mean like the actor? You didn't think he did a good job portraying no, it? No, I, I don't think the movie did a good job portraying it. Yeah. I don't think they tried to portray it that much. When they later track him down, I felt none of that. All right, so let's sort of, we've already sort of hinted at what happened in the scene, but he ties her up to the wheelchair mm-hmm. and explains the premise of it, right? Yes. He's like, listen, you got it. 
and I gave it to you. Mm-hmm. And it's got to follow you around. Yeah. He was like, yo, girl, you can get it. But, like, it's a really bad thing. It's a monster. And let me explain to you <laughs> what it is. It's not and that you can get it. It's you, that you already had it. Yeah, and yeah. And if, you, if it gets you, you die. Yeah, and then it gets me. Right. So he's telling her, just sleep with someone else as fast as you can. Right. Yeah. It should be easy for you. You're a girl. Yeah, that's when I feel less sympathy for him. So he tells her it it's always walking. And it can shape shift. It can shape shift. And I, I think sometimes it looks like the people that you love to mess with you. Yeah, and then he says it's not dumb, it's smart. Yeah. But it's not fast. It's, it's, it's slow. not fast. He yeah. says yeah. it's slow, but it's mm-hmm. not dumb. I think and there's only exactly one of it. And at this point, I just said, well, why don't you just fly to Japan and then wait 35 years and then drive back? Yeah, I wish, fly back. I actually wish there was a scene where like he was like, I flew to a different state, and then 48 hours later, it shows up no matter what. Yeah, if he had said that, I would have no problem with that aspect of this movie. Yeah, because the, the rules established that like you can drive away far away, and it's walking slow on foot, so you can have a couple of days rest, and then it finds you. So like, here's what you do. You get a job as a traveling salesman. And you're fine. <laughs> Maybe you got a case. Maybe it plays music sometimes. Join Maybe the- do a little soft <laughs> shoe. <laughs> or yeah. Merchant Marine. Yeah. yeah. Join the Navy. Cruise ship director. But <laughs> Mikey is right. If they explained it by no matter yeah. how far away you go, 48 hours later, it's going to show back up. This bothers me the whole film. Cause this, it does. Because he, he has her strapped to the chair and he's like telling her all the rules of the monster. And this is the one glaring omission. And, and it bothers I'm okay you for with the rest it of them. Because yeah. of what I see in this movie and because I don't think she should have to give up her entire life. But the be- to, f- to fit with the metaphor, it would have been better if he was like, doesn't matter how far you go, you can't run from it. And I think he says that. He just doesn't specifically say. He doesn't say that he at all. Yeah. Say that at all. No. I read a review from the director who said at one point, yeah, it can get on, it can walk on planes and then just, I don't know, pace or something. So That doesn't matter because it's, it's not, not on the exactly, film. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But that didn't bother me. I understand why it would bother you guys. It didn't bother me. Yeah, it's just stupid. But I also thought, I think it would have helped the film because it would have helped the metaphor. Me too. Can I say this? Yeah. Couldn't he have just done this over, I don't know, a first go mountain, a shake at Steak and Shake? No, because she had to see it. Yeah. It would have walked up to Steak and Shake. I definitely think there's less traumatic ways to introduce a monster yes! to someone besides tying them to a wheelchair. Yes! I feel like this is the most insane way to do it. I'm going to wheel you around on a wheelchair that you're strapped down to close to a monster trying to kill you while I explain the premise of what it is. But he didn't tell her about this before. This is what ends I do think yeah. it's, it's part of the metaphor. I get that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that there are better ways to do what Absolutely. he did. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, like not doing it. It's sex, Jen. It's going to happen, please. <laughs> Abstinence doesn't work, Jen. Come on. You know. <laughs> sex. I miss that part of sex education where, like, the monster could follow you afterwards. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he wheels the wheelchair to the side of the parking garage. They I, see I full frontal. I don't like the heights. So then they look down, and yeah, there's a woman walking towards them. I don't like it. it I like nudity, but I did not like any of the nudity in this movie. Yes, it because it's threatening nudity. It's menacing. It's aggressive nudity. It's not enticing nudity. Because when they're actually having sex, you don't really see anything. No, you don't at all. Yeah, the Which only, I was fine with. I don't need nudity yeah. in my movies. I prefer it, but I don't need it. And I think that kind of supports the <laughs> message of it. <laughs> when you see it, it's not that it's being scary or acting creepy. It's the, just that it's very directly walking right towards you. There's just only one real right section on where it gets like a, a creepy scream, I think. The granny? No, the, the kid looking through the door. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. I don't think he makes a noise. He just mouths it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. But it's, it's, it's just very menacing and overwhelming and uh, I hated it. Overbearing. Then it cuts back to the main character's sister Mm -hmm. and a bunch of the friends on the front porch and then you see the guy, I don't know his name. Yeah, Yeah, uh, he pulls up and then gets out. The infected. Yeah, and then he he's Hugh at this point. So then he gets out and gets into the back seat to get her out. So they immediately, Mm -hmm. like something is up. World's worst Uber driver. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if they get out to open your door, that's pretty good. But if you're tied up in the back, it's pretty bad. Yeah. And so then the car, he gets back in his car and pulls away, and we just see her laying in the middle of the road in her own. And then her friends and sister go get her. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say, I, I don't agree with a lot of his directorial choices, but some of these shots work for me. Like this mm-hmm. shot, you see her, the friends in shock. She's struggling. It's a long, drawn-out shot. Mm-hmm. It just really conveys the terrifying situation of the movie. And so then we see Greg, who we haven't met yet, but he'll be one of the characters soon, and he is looking out his window at all the cops 
on the street. And but he's, he's like, like a neighbor. He's like a neighbor kid. Yeah, he's right across the street. And he says, oh, yeah, that family's messed he up. He seems like an older kid. He seems like he's like two years older. Yeah. I like that they called the police. It yeah. was more realistic that the family immediately called the police. this is where we find out that the guy she went on a date with, who I think his fake name was Hugh. Is that right, Jen? Yes. But we found out it was a fake name and he was renting a house in downtown Detroit that mm-hmm. was like a derelict house. And I'm we not don't... sure this is when we find out, but this is when the police start investigating it. And we quickly find it out. But but they ask her to confirm that the sex was consensual. And she says, yes, it was. The sex was, not the STD. Exactly. Sexually S- transmitted danger. <laughs> That's what the STD stands for. Is it? Sexually transmitted danger. Oh. So if you're looking at this as a, because me- I think this is important to say, because we're saying this is a metaphor for sexual assault. And I don't think that the actual sex in the movie is a metaphor for sexual assault, because I don't think she is assaulted when they're having sex. She clearly consented. She was okay with, she gave her consent for she that She didn't sex. have full information though. So like she I. She did not. <clears throat> yeah. Which I could see if you are going into someone's apartment, you can consent to making out, but that does not mean that you have to consent to everything else. And and if you know that going to this apartment means you're going to have sex with this person and you don't want to have sex with that person, you're probably not going to go into that apartment. So if she knew that this monster thing was going to start following her when she had sex with him, she wouldn't have had sex with him. And I think what this really shows is that she has given her trust to someone who has betrayed that trust. Right. And that's where the violation is. But she doesn't say no at any point during this sex. She does not. The, the my problem with it is because she got chloroformed. Consensual. No, yeah. she didn't get chloroformed during the sex. After. But, but, but I'm not <clears> saying <throat> that nothing wrong happened. Clearly, something wrong happened. I don't think that she had the full information. And had she had full information, she wouldn't have had sex with him. And that's why it's wrong. But I think the monster is the metaphor for the rape. And that's why I think that the chloroform part metaphorically is part of the sex. Surface level, she But it's not part of the sex, though. I think so, in the metaphor. Well, that's just not what's on the screen. The physical act of sex is consensual. Yes. The physical act of the sex is consensual. But I don't think it would have happened had she known. That's, exactly. that's my and point. And she did yeah. not that's have the sex, full information. That's the STD like interpretation. I interpret it as that whole scene was the sex metaphorically. The sex part and the chloroforming and the explaining. That's him fulfilling his needs above his own and not caring about her and violating her overall. Of, so over o- her own? Yes, yeah. and then without caring about her and violating her, and she only consented to the first part. And so I think as a metaphor, it's just a, a, a metaphor for that whole situation. I understand that, but that's not at all what happens in the movie. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just saying yeah, the, yeah. a part of the metaphor, that's what I think the metaphor is. Because I think if you look at it practically like that, it becomes more of the STD thing. Yeah. But I'm only talking about what happens in the movie, not what you guys are seeing right. extrapolated from it and putting in your own perspective on it. I'm only saying what's on the screen is consensual, but had she known, it wouldn't have happened. Right. Yeah, it's just in my mind, the metaphor is is that he took all the power and that not just in the sex, but also in the monster, all of it. Oh, yeah. And so like that's how I kind of put Because it he didn't give her a full and accurate representation of what would happen by having sex with him. So can you actually give consent if you are not fully aware of what you're consenting to? That may be what this is so getting like, at. She's, yeah, that's a really good... And I could get down with that interpretation I because like, she like that doesn't have full information. She, she does. does consent with the partial information that she has. He's a guy named Hugh who she's sort of into. Right. Like if someone like drank a lot and passed out, like they maybe they consented at first and they were too drunk yes. and, then, and then when she woke up, that's one of the, the tied up scene. I think that's a really good interpretation. Yeah. Or just that someone had an STD and didn't tell you and now you have herpes. Exactly. It could be either because or. I think that there's the STD reading. I think that's a, a, a more surface level reading of oh, this yeah, movie. Oh yeah, that is exactly what happens in this movie. Right. What but you I guys are you... saying is not happening on screen. Yeah. You're reading shit into it that actually does not happen. I'm not saying right. that that's no, not no. what he intended, but that's not at all what he I'm shot. I'm just saying our interpretation fits more with like the emotions of what they're feeling. Right. But if you have sex with someone that has a life threatening STD and they do not tell you even though you consented to the sex you have still been violated. I agree completely That's what, and that's what I think what they're trying to get at here right. this, this movie is not a fun movie to talk yeah, about Yeah I don't like talking about this movie. I'm very uncomfortable talking about this movie. <laughs> this, oh, thing, this yeah. is worse than Jack Frost for me right now. I, oh, feel, like, yeah. I feel like I'm at work. Jack Frost is more of a joke like it's, it's a fucking snowman. It's stupid and it is rape but it's literally silly. a fucking snowman. Oh god <laughs> <laughs> So yeah let's move past this scene Yeah okay then we see she's in the hospital. Right. They're doing like what I would assume is sort of a rape kit. And the only reason I say that is because her legs are definitely up in like stirrups in that shot. I mean, they could still gather evidence because they did have sex. They did. And even though it was consensual, he did lie to her about who he was so right. they could run that DNA through a database and maybe find him if he has a record. Yeah. If he's I understood done this that. To someone yeah. Else. yeah. So we find out. So then we see the police investigating. Um, they find her purse in the parking lot. In the wheelchair. Ugh. 
I have a thing about creepy wheelchairs. This is when we find out that they used a fake name. Rented a fake house, yes. I mean, it was a real house. It was like a bouncy <laughs> castle house. <laughs> like, this is not a real house. He said he was ashamed house. of his house. Yeah, he just never wanted me to come over. He, he said it was a real blast. <laughs> I'm ashamed of my house, but it's a real house. The next thing that happens, we see her looking at herself in the mirror. And she looks down her pants? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. What if. Okay, okay. Stay with me now. She runs into a house. It comes, walks into the house. Three guys in ghillie suits get up. It comes in, it's knocking on the door. And Chris Hampton's like, have a seat right over here. <laughs> She's underage. <laughs> Is there a little girl in here all alone? Yeah, come on back. And it's got like, a, like you know, like hard cider. <laughs> I brought the Mike's Hard Lemonade. We went to your It Follows chat room. <laughs> She's only 13, It. Quit following her. <laughs> but I'm what glad is I Chris could... Hansen up to? Supposed to look at Never Slevin. I think he's fighting vampires in Alaska. Okay, I'm ready. I think I should get a trophy for actually making jokes about the movie that you don't have to cut out. So, listeners, um, I'm not exactly sure how much got cut out. There was a bunch of nonsense talking, um, which I'm very grateful for because it took me a minute to... Um, talk about the next part of this movie um, because this is a hard subject for me to talk about. Um, I am a survivor of sexual assault and I see and I have PTSD because of it and I see a lot of the rest of this movie. I identify a lot with it and it's hard for me to watch some of this and it's hard for me to talk about. So just bear with me and I'm going to keep it under control and it's going to be fine but so this is one of the hardest scenes for me to watch in the movie because she's looking at herself in the mirror and she's looking at her body and she's thinking there's something broken and there's something different and so that's what I see. These are situations where you never feel like you say the right things right? and there's nothing you know you feel like nothing you do helps but I feel like you know, she was looking in the mirror. I think Jen's spot on about this. And I appreciate you opening up about that because I do feel like this movie is a big metaphor for that. And that's why a lot of people, you know, latch on to this movie. And you do see the shame in her face and the Yeah, I mean the, she does. The confusion mm -hmm. and all that. And I think there's a lot of subtle things that play during this scene. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that because I've looked at myself that way. That I you should probably cut that out because it looks like I'm just looking down my underwear. Jen, yeah. we can't stop you from doing that. We've huh? tried. <laughs> And, and, and just because you look down your underwear doesn't mean stuff. Ha I look down my underwear all the time. Sometimes I like to know, like, how we doing down there today? You know, like, let's check in with the boys. Is the soreness and redness gone down at all? <laughs> Flame counter. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I just say, good morning, Girth Brooks. <laughs> uh, how you feeling today? Hmm. I'm feeling good. That nickname's not going away, is it? Is the thunder going to roll today, Girth Brooks? <laughs> I love that song. You're rooting for I me. wake up every morning, I tell him, be ready. Always be ready. <laughs> Because you've got friends in low places. <laughs> <laughs> Garth Brooks is a very sweet person. Oh, God. Garth Brooks is a sweet person. I don't person. know about Garth Brooks. Ladies, yeah, let me ladies. tell you. <laughs> Mikey is single, ladies. <laughs> Jen, take it away. All right. So, if we... The next thing we see, oh, there's a red ball that hits the window. And what did she say? What, I was is it, like, the red ball now? Is the red ball the it now? <laughs> but I may have picked it up after a couple of watchings, but if you see the color red... It is going to be coming soon. Well, also, and I mean, it's going to be around the corner. It soon. likes to throw random shit. Like it, it throws does. random shit throughout the movie. So yeah. I think it did throw that ball. I think have. so too. But oh, oh, well, because when we pan out, we see somebody with a red shirt waiting right outside her window. Yeah. So yeah, I think it was just trying to break the window yeah. to get in. All right. Um. So then the next thing we see is her in school. Do you think if she caught that red ball, that he would be it? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You're out. <laughs> And, and our whole team gets to come back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then somebody comes back to life, the girl from the first Oh, scene. my God. This movie is dodgeball rules. So we see her sitting in class. And lots of times when you see a character in class and somebody's reading something, it is like explaining the movie. But I wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying. I think I was reading some kind of poem. Anyways, so she's, she's in class. She's looking around. And she looks out the window. And she sees what looks like an old lady in a white um, hospital gown kind of walking towards her. 
And she's still like across the quad, like outside the building that she's in. So it could still be nothing, but it we know because we know it's it. But and this is her first real solo encounter with it. Yes. Yeah. Because I think she could tell herself and did tell herself, this is not real. This is all in my Yeah, mind. it's all made up. Yeah. It was a bad dream or whatever. Yeah. Or she's like, you know, I'm just going to get over this. And then so she starts to get nervous and she walks out into the hallway. And then we see old granny walking right up to her. And I can't remember if she's saying anything, but she's clearly walking right to her. And so then she runs away. No, she it. says something like, hey, what are you doing or whatever? And mm-hmm. the girls on the other side of the hallway, on the other side of the old woman, mm-hmm. clearly can't see the old woman. And they're like, what? Oh, that's right. I yeah. keep forgetting yeah. that nobody else can see them. Yeah. So she just looks like she's crazy. So she drives away. Then she drives to the ice cream store where Paul and um, her sister work. She's telling them what happened. She's really upset. I think this is an important time to, to take a pause, talk about Paul and his terrible haircut because I really hated his haircut throughout the movie. There's no really light moments where I can jump in and talk bad about Paul's hair, mm-hmm. but I really want to do it. He looks like he's got a seven-year-old's haircut. I don't like him. He pines over the main character the whole movie, and I can't even, like... They end up together. I don't like that because of his haircut. I like Paul. I don't like Paul. Paul's an idiot. I don't think the ending works because it's Paul. I think it, I think they should have done Paul better, and I would have liked the ending better. I think he read to me like kind of a dumb 18-year-old kid. Sure, yeah, this whole movie is executed very poorly. Yeah, I, well, I think there's parts that work, and that's what frustrates me with this film. I think there's parts with the metaphor, with the monster, with everything that really work and pop, but then I think there's part with like the ambiguous time and the ambiguous technology and Paul, because he does read like a stupid 19-year-old that doesn't really have the depth to handle the situation, and I feel like the end... If you're going to tie it like with the metaphor, it doesn't really work with it. They both die minutes after the movie ends. (laughs) I mean, if that happened, I would believe it. Yes. Yeah. Um, But I like Paul. So they're talking to. I like Paul. I just don't like his haircut. Paul and his sister. And we learned they've been. (laughs) They've they've been. um, They've been friends for a while. They're talking in the ice cream store. She's telling them what's happening. And they don't really believe her. They think this is bullshit. What she's saying is insane. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can understand them not believing her. Right. But they do. They can see that she's upset and they want to help her not be upset. So their solution. And this is kind of where we found out that all of their parents don't pay any attention to anything they do because they're basically together for the rest of the movie with no parents around. They're all going to have a slumber party on the it, Jay's house with her sister. Now Paul to, says, I'm going to stay up all night. And this is when we realize Paul's in love with her. And, and I like the scene because, I, again, with the metaphor of, um, I think they believed her with the assault in that night yeah. because they saw her dropped off. Mm-hmm. Yes. But they have a hard time understanding trauma, PTSD, and that it's still with her and that she's upset and they don't know what to do. They're, uh, they're visibly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So they're like we'll just all spend the night together and then you know it'll be fine Dude, and I think it's his friends trying to be supportive of someone who's been through a traumatic event whether so they believe the oh, yeah. full extent of the traumatic event or not all right and I don't even think it's like they believe it's like they just don't that you can't comprehend going through something like right. that. Right. They can't see the monster. Right. So um, then it cuts to them having their slumber party and she can't sleep. Paul has said that he'll stay up all night and make sure it doesn't come. Oh, God, Paul. Although, because I think it's already been established that she's the only one that will be able to see it. So how is staying up all night? Although I guess, I don't know. But anyways, she comes downstairs and they start talking and they're sitting both sitting on the couch. They're a little footsieing um, and they're talking about how Paul was her first kiss. Right, but she he also went off and kissed her little sister. Mm-hmm. I mean, her sister's pretty cute. Yeah, and it's kind of this, like, kind of... <laughs> yeah, I can see that. They could both get it. Yeah. They're kind of quasi-flirting. They're talking about this time when they were young and they got all these pornos and they just spread them out all over a front yard or something because they didn't really understand what sex was. And I think you can kind of see this as fitting into the metaphor of them being kind of innocent and not really... Yeah, we were young and innocent. We didn't even know sex was bad at this point. Exactly. We just put it out for... We didn't know it was... Yeah. We didn't know it was something we had to be ashamed of and something we had to hide. And then we hear a window break. Paul gets up to go investigate. (sighs) Paul not only has a bad haircut, and he is sweet because he's like, I'm going to go get him. But Paul's like 90 pounds wet. Yeah. Paul's as dumb as his haircut. <laughs> so um, he doesn't see the monster. He goes in and he investigates and he says, I didn't see her. And so then he goes upstairs, I think, to see, I don't know. Anyways, he leaves her alone. And then she goes into the kitchen and she sees a girl who has got part of her clothes ripped off. It looks like her hands might be bound behind her. She's got her teeth knocked out and she's peeing. Yeah. And oh, her, and her, Jesus her, Christ. Like, I hate her. 
her clothes so are like ripped off yeah. and she's pe- it, it just looks it like looks she's like a victim she's of- been assaulted yeah. yes and she's just walking towards her not saying anything it's terrifying and again this scene is slow and quiet and you take it all in and mm-hmm. it's very creepy and yeah. very oppressive Yes, and so she starts screaming and she runs upstairs and nobody else can see this. And so she goes in and she wants them to close the door. Yeah, she's screaming, yelling, crying. She's freaking out, obviously, as you would do. Yes, and telling them somebody's following me. And then Jay asks her friends if there's something wrong with her. If there's something wrong with Jay. Like, so Jay's asking, is there there something something wrong wrong with with me? me? Yeah, Jay says, is there something wrong with me? I did not hear that. Yeah, I heard her say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they don't answer. They kind of stare at her. Which is, like, super sad. It is. Because she thinks at this point she might be losing her mind. Right. Yeah, and they don't say no. And then she says, but you didn't believe me. Then this is when the tall man comes in because we think- This was super spooks. Like, I hated this. And this whole part, there really isn't anything that's super, like, scary in this movie. It's just all eerie and creepy AF. So the the music drops. Mm -hmm. Hot Daphne knocks on the door. It's like, what's wrong? I was upstairs eating Twizzlers or doing quirky Daphne stuff. Wearing some glasses. Yeah. So uh, they were Red vines are better. Let's open the door. We're Twizzlers. Because Daphne's out there. Yeah. And so- (laughs) And then this lurch goes up behind her. He's about to like smack her in the face. Yeah. And then it is tall white shirt lurch just kind of, and he's got to bend down to get into the room and he just like slowly starts following her. They don't see him. And she goes out to the, what looks like a little balcony on that room. It just kind of like jumps off Mm. that balcony or climbs down. But, and then she gets her bike and she bikes away. And this is when we see Greg and his smoking date in the car, see what's going on. And she goes, bikes to a park at night and she's on the swing. So she (laughs) goes to the, swing and then she looks and we see some what it turns out to be her friends walking towards her but for a minute it's unclear um and so they walk up to her and they're like oh what's wrong well this is where greg yeah. comes over oh, yeah. and greg starts walking and he's a single person walking towards her and until he starts talking you don't know if he's yeah because she goes who's that over there who's that and then mm-hmm. uh, then he yells and you're like oh, okay that's actually that person they explain what the problem is to him they say we got to find hugh we got to figure out what's going on or we got to figure out what who this guy is we don't know who hugh is and so Greg goes and gets his car. Who are you? Who are you? Who? 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 Yes! I did one! Oh, number two. Oh, man. And then the Greg who is such a bad man. And puts his sunglasses on and goes, yeah! And goes and gets his car. <laughs> There's no obstacle so huge that we can't overcome. <sighs> yes! A chin laugh. You got to keep it. <laughs> All right. So they decide that they want to find Hugh. So yeah. Greg gets his car. The and they game. go to find out. They get in their mystery machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shaggy. Paul is shaggy with his stupid haircut. Yeah. And then they go and try and find Hugh. And Greg is yeah. definitely the, the Fred. The dude with the ass guy. Yeah. Fred. Yeah. Fred. Yeah. So they're driving for a significant amount of time. And every no, so time we see them driving, it's implied that they're driving for a long time. So they're trying to buy Yeah. And that's just to buy them time, time because this thing's just walking behind them. Exactly. Right? So it, it gives them some time. So once they get there, um, they're like going around the house and they're seeing these like not traps, but like alarms sort yeah. of like. And it's like, an abandoned house. It is. It's clearly yeah. not the house that he lives in, really. No, it's like a house he like held up in while yeah. the, it yeah, was it following him. Yeah, like a foreclosed him. house, Detroit. Yeah. 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 And I can imagine him just going back and forth between this house and his house that we see him at later. Right. And yeah. then Shaggy, a.k.a. Paul, finds his masturbatory material yeah. and finds a picture. There's a mattress in the attic yeah. with a bunch of porno magazines. Okay, I have a lot of questions about this scene. One, why would Paul sit in the mattress, remove the tissues with, you know, the happy tissues full of... Love and joy. Full of love and joy. And sit there and start flipping through his porno magazines. Two... Other question. Oh, he's a man. Oh, yeah. That's what. What else okay. do you do when you're sitting on a mattress? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and, and then <laughs> the second big question. The assaulter, Hugh, he's being chased by it, finds time to buy 20 porno mags, take them to his safe house, and that's all he does is sit in the attic of his safe house and masturbate? I think he's trying to play with it. Play he's with trying it? To play with he's it. trying to Jen, play with it. Jen, can you please go on about I that? I think he's trying to experiment. He's trying to see if he can give the ladies in these magazines it, or he's trying to see if, give if it he to the can magazines. just expel enough semen, then eventually he'll get it out of his system. I can say <laughs> this. You never get you it can't. out of his system. You can't do that, yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. make more, Jen. It's not like you. We don't have a finite number. Yeah. We just make more. Yeah. I've tried. Stay hydrated. 
So, yeah, we find his porn stash, and this is where there's the the closet incident that scared Todd, where sister may or may not be hot. This was the scariest part of it for me. She is hot. She's looking into a closet that's got like three things hanging, and then um, we hear a big crash, and something falls in, and it's the sister who's pushed part of the closet wall in on her, and it it did scare Todd. It almost looked like she didn't even mean to do it. Like She was like, oh, Oh, shit. I don't think she did. Yeah, Yeah. She's like, oh, sorry, Todd. I didn't mean to scare you so much. But anyway, Shaggy finds a picture tucked into the porn mags and they see a letter jacket from a school that's close by. So they go to that school and they try and find out Hugh's real name and they do. It's yeah. like Josh something or other, right? Jeff. Jeff, I was close. I got Jeff. a question yeah. Hit me. for you guys. Why does he have that picture tucked into his porn? He had a crush on that girl, Jen. I have a, a follow-up question. Yeah. Who has physical pictures? It, this. I do. <sighs> I hate this world that this person has created. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do feel like he's just a bad writer and director, and that's why none of this makes sense. It would have made more sense but, if it was like a Polaroid of him and his girlfriend. There were there were Polaroids in this world, but instead of white borders, they were blue. Did you not see this? I did not no. see that. It, there were so many choices that but just made me mad. But if you're going to go mad. ahead and put that in the background, yeah. use that in the porno magazine. Yeah, why, why would not? you even build the lore and not even use it? Because he's a bad writer and director. Maybe it's space porn. What? I don't know. I don't know what you guys are even talking about. Let me tell you, I know space porn. Okay. I, yeah, <laughs> listen. Okay. This, this is not, not space, space porn. porn. Yeah. Did you hear the Mars rover finally died today? Speaking of space porn. <laughs> <laughs> that Mars rover can get it. Oh, yeah. Well, and by it, I mean an extra battery because no. that motherfucker died. Yeah, except he's on Mars. So and in all anything. fairness, it lasted, I think, 13 years longer than they originally expected it to. Yeah, it was supposed to last for now. I months. wish someone could say that about me, Tom. Yeah, I know. Listen, that guy could really go. <laughs> all right, let's talk about this fucking yeah. movie. Okay, and then they go to the school. Which has no security because they walk in and they're like, we're looking for this boy. Because have you seen this boy? Have you yeah. seen this boy? Yeah, because they just walk into the school and... Um, so then we see this 360 shot, which is actually cool for the first couple of rotations. Yeah. It okay, rotates oh. like a full three times. The first yeah. two I was on board for it. The third round was like. Bleh. Yeah. I, right. I, we were watching this. And uh, so it rotates. It shows them looking in the yearbook. And it, it shows the thing back. walking towards them. Not yeah. the thing. The it. Sorry. The it walks through the yard. Then it rotates again. It's closer. I'm like, oh, that's a cool shot. Then we go again for the third round. Yeah. And I'm like, now I'm just dizzy. But they find out who he is. And they go to his house. And they mm-hmm. meet up with. He said his name was Josh. Yeah. Who, the Hugh. Some helpful person in the office just at helps these random strangers identify one of their students and tells them where he lives. Yeah, that's not going to bite her in the ass later on. Oh, no. Yeah, she's definitely not getting fired. She yeah. probably went on her shell and Googled it. She Yeah. <laughs> she shell, shell searched I, I, for I, it. I like this scene because uh, they come to confront Hugh about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, to do that, they sit on a golf course, Indian style. Well, he lives on a golf course. Yeah, he does. He's one That's of That's just a people. weird location. Like, I would be, I don't know if I could wait till we got to the golf course. What? I think I would have, if he answered the door, I would He like, lived on a golf course. They walked into his front yard, more or less. Yeah. Was he, he wasn't out there. They had to knock on the door. I would have been like. I know. <laughs> they pulled him out into the front yard and talked on the front yard, which was on a golf course. Right. Yeah. There's I wish it would have showed that part. Uh. The emotion of him answering the door and then like them like. like oh, yeah. To, because you the need next, to answer questions right now. The next thing we see is them sitting in a circle and talking about uh, what happened. And he's apologizing and he's explaining. Um, With no remorse, mm-hmm. by the way. There's no remorse in this scene for anything he's done. He apologize. He verbally apologizes. But yeah, I think in this scene... I feel less regret from him that's directed towards her. I feel more because he talks again about himself, like, "Hey, if it gets you, it's coming back to me. So you exactly. need to get out of here. And we get, shouldn't get, be get, together. Get yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And this is another thing that we see. She's pulling pieces of grass and she's laying them on her legs in little lines that look just like the kinds of lines that people will cut with. So I think that is showing us the self harm that she might be feeling. Well, and even if he did say I'm sorry and he meant it, he still did it. Exactly. She still none has of this, to live with None it. of that matters. Yeah, because he still did it. Yeah. Exactly. And he still said they're like, go get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, go have sex with somebody else. I think this is where he says it could be e- it'll be easy for you because you're a girl. Right. And I'll say this. It probably would be easier for her to find someone to have sex with than it would for like a Paul who looks like an idiot with a 12-year-old's haircut. But I don't know. This scene it just points out that Hugh slash Josh is a horrible person, which we already knew. Right. And it sets more up of the rules up. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at this point, what happens? Yeah, this is when they go to Greg. And they, they That's just, right. Greg is like, and they, the next shot is them in the car. And, uh, Greg's with them the whole time. Yeah, yeah. and then Greg's um, got a car because he's. Cool. And then the main character's sister is like, "Is your mom gonna be cool with this?" And she's like, "She's not even gonna notice." Yeah. I used to go up here all the time with my dad, indicating they're going somewhere, yeah. and it's that beach house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it kind of cuts back and forth to Jay, and you just see that that whole confrontation of finding him did not give resolution to anything in this movie. So right. they they have to go somewhere where they they they're safe. So they all go to the beach house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just saying just buy. He, he's kind of explaining a, a couple of the things that he's done, so now she kind of understands what she needs to do. So anyway, they get there, they hang out on the beach, and it starts to walk up behind them while they're all sort of hanging out on the beach. Well, and so now we're at the cabin, and we've got a gun. So Greg is now wearing a snake shirt, and he has to go <laughs> pee in the... No, a dragon shirt. A, dra a snaky dragon shirt. And so he goes off and pees, and then we see everyone just sitting on the beach, and then we see Glass's friend start to walk up behind her, and everyone's still just talking, and and then in the other perspective, we see Glass's friend in an inner tube in the lake. Oh, the shit, it is Glass's friend. Yeah, Because I, I thought it was just some chick with glasses. Yeah. No, Because she's far friend. away walking up, and you know the real Glass's friend, not it, pretending to be Glass's friend, is in the water. Right. So I you even don't see, know until yeah. after you've already seen Glass's friend behind. And, and I also like this, the scene, because we were debating as we watched this movie, was does it only take the form of other victims of yes. it? I don't think it does. No, well, no well, it, 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 it takes Glass's glass friend and she never gets it. Yes, and, and it said at the beginning, or when he's explaining the first time, it can look like people you love to hurt you. And so um, she walks up, and nobody else can see it, and she doesn't see because she's behind. It's behind her. And she's let her guard down. And then we see her hair start to go up, and she first starts to notice. And they're seeing her being attacked, and Paul gets attacked, too. And so everybody knows something's going on, even though they can't see it. So they run in this little... And Paul hits it with a chair. Yeah, Paul hits yeah, it with a chair right. and gets it slapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just bounces off of it and flies back into the Because dunes. Paul is 40 pounds. And then Greg notices that there's a ruckus. But he hasn't seen any of that, so he still kind of can allow himself to believe that none of this is real. And right, she's they're crazy. running at this point. So they run into mm -hmm. the beach garage, and she he's grabs the gun. She Jay grabs, the, grabs gun. the gun. Yeah, and he is running up, and so we see. I think it's still sister. It's still Glass's friend yeah, walking up to the door, lumbering up, and she just starts shooting at him, and she's almost like it. It. If I were Greg, I would think she's shooting at me. So he hides behind this rickety he little chair. He hides behind a lawn chair. Which I mean, I guess. Oh my god. What else are you gonna hide behind? Not like a. It's like a. No, Wait. just run away. They're shooting a gun at you. <laughs> so they're just standing in the doorway shooting literally at him. Mm -hmm. He's an idiot. Except she's shooting at her. He's just happening to stand directly behind yeah, her. Yeah, she is shooting she, at it. Yeah, yeah. And Todd at this point is like, can you even like shoot it? Yeah, yeah and then he immediately got yeah. shot. <laughs> she immediately got shot and then falls down and then immediately stands back up. So I was like, can you even shoot? Oh, you uh, can't shoot. Oh, oh, it didn't it it hurt. Okay, okay. Now, I, all of that was explained I very the quickly. I was like, yeah, thanks for I did too, yeah. Because yeah. right. we just in real time figure out the rules, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, so they're all inside and they close the door and then they hear the knocking on the door and then part of the bottom of the lower part blows. Out. And this is when Greg walks up and is like, why'd you do to my door? And they're like, we didn't do that. Yeah. What's going on? Everything is going Move, on. Greg. Shut up, Greg. He mentions yeah. everything but the four shots from a gun fired in his direction. That's what I was yelling. I was like, you just got shot at by your friends. You're asking the wrong fucking question. Right. Yeah, and so then uh, Jay is walking up, and I think she's still got the gun to look out the window and then we see creepy little skinny blonde kid poke his face in and he get kind of unhinged jaw kind of thing he does a weird thing he does a mouth. weird face he I'm not sure if it's unhinged he but yeah weird, it's, he's it's like freaky weird, tiny man and he, yeah it's like, almost like a grudge thing this is one of the scarier moments for me yes it yeah. was sort of like that it, mm -hmm. it becomes a little tiny boy man thing with the mouth open then, because oh, well, it can fit through the door exactly because yeah. I think for a moment we see the tall lurch we do yeah, yeah. and there's no yeah. way he's getting through that hole in the door but the small kid can and then we see this and this is kind of where we learn it can really quickly shaped. Yeah, it's a T-1000. It is. For yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. It is a T-1000 that's just real slow. Except it doesn't have to touch you to it's take a T on the either. Oh my God. <laughs> God damn you, Texas Instruments for creating the it. <gasps> <gasps> what? Do we ever see It Follows in my Texas Instruments No, but it's called the it. Oh my and God. What if the shell was Texas made by Instruments Texas? is T-I. What if you switch it around? But also, what if TI calculators made Clam Kindle? Oh, I hate this of. movie so much. I forgot we were talking about this fucking movie. <laughs>
You're just living in your little denial. I was having fun for a second. Yeah, we're gonna do the oh. TI-86 podcast where we just like make elaborate scenes about TI-86s. You guys want to check out my graph, Brooks? <laughs> 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 Nailed it. Then she. Oh, the run- end starts to crawl through the door, and they go out the side of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so then they, she goes and steals the car and just leaves them all behind and drives. And then she's driving down the road, and a car pulls out, and she swerves off the road, hits a mailbox, drives into the corner, and knocks herself. That's out. right. And then she wakes up in the hospital. <laughs> And this is when she has sex with Greg. Okay, so she wakes up in the hospital and we spend a long time with her watching. And this is one thing I think the movie does really well and effectively for me. And I understand why other people don't like it, but I think we can see kind of the pain on her face and we see her detachment. And lots of times when people around her are happy and talking, we see her kind of staring off into the distance. And so we see, we pan through a lot of hospital rooms and we see like a couple talking to each other and being romantic. So like a family with the get well soon. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we see lots of people in more hopeful situations and this is when I was thinking back to the trading places game and I think that um, I've oftentimes thought I wish I could trade places with someone who doesn't have these problems and I think we can see that and that's what these scenes are meant to show us. Um, but, but so then we don't really see a lot of conversation about it. We just see them in a room having sex. Well they've had some, he's been pretty supportive but like not understanding. Yeah. I don't think he believed it was following her. He even or- says later, I think not in that scene but uh, in a, a scene coming up that he's like something happened but it's not what she says is happening right right i think she just and wanted him literally. to save her and he was willing to take that on but not in a real way because he didn't really believe her he did right or he didn't he didn't take her seriously enough to be able to understand and he kind of seemed like he just wanted sex so then you it cuts to greg uh like flirting in at, at lunch with a different girl with like short black hair mm. i guess we don't see him having sex but it's it just sort kind of, of implied. Allude, it kind of they seem very familiar mm. so maybe it's kind of showing he's not really serious about her right and he gets a couple of days where it doesn't really bother him to the point where he's like i guess it's not following and that's me. why and that's, and that's says, why i, I think he had it. sex with that girl at the table even though we don't see it it gives him a few days mm-hmm. yeah and then it, it gets kills him. her yeah yes and then so she's looking out the window and he comes over and he tries to see her and he says and this is where he says the whole thing about um something happened but it's not what she thinks yes and the sister is saying even though she is safe for right now and she knows she's safe because she can see that he's still alive. She still doesn't want to come out of her room. Right. And so she's looking out the window and she sees, I think it looks like Greg in long underwear yeah, walking it's in, it's towards himself. Yeah, Because yeah. she like yells at him out mm-hmm. the window. It does. I, I mean, I thought it was Greg. I think it, it might Greg. be. Yeah. It was Greg. And so we see him go up to the door and he tries to get in the door and he can't. And so then he walks over to their window and he picks up a rock and he breaks the window and he just like bones through the window. If that's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so she calls over, tries to warn him and then she walks in. Yeah, it goes to voicemail. So she runs out into the street to go across, uh, go into his house to try to save him uh-huh. and runs upstairs mm-hmm. and he, you hear banging and it's his mom banging on Greg's door really creepily. It's more like an yeah. ominous knock. It but is, yeah. yeah. It, just repetitive bah, bah, not bah. stopping and then she stops for a minute and then she looks at her and then she turns back and she keeps knocking. And then he opens the door and we see it's his mom with one of her boobs hanging it's out. It's like, Mom, knock it off. Yeah. And then she just what are you doing, jumps mom? him. Yeah, she jumps on him and gets real yeah. squirty. And yes. And then Jay goes in and watches and she's on top of him, like riding him to death. I don't know. I don't know if they're actually having sex or not. They're but not whatever. actually having sex. No, you, they're not. It, it points out that they're both fully clothed. Right, but right, right. There's I mean, no I penetration. Had sex fully clothed, Dad. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> I mean, I've had sex with a lot of clothes on, Todd. Yeah, but they're, no, you, not like this. Like, their genitalia are covered by clothing. Yes. Well, we don't see it because they're like so. No, we do see it. They're dry humping, except wet humping because she's either peeing or. But mind you, dry humping his mother. Oh, yeah. This would maybe be the worst way to die in the history of the world. Uh, It'd be pretty rough. And so she gets out of there. She's driving away and sees him now, Greg. It is appearing as Greg following her. And so she drives away and she just drives almost to a beach. She drives, pulls over to the side of the road and then sleeps on the hood of her car. Um, So she wakes up and it's morning. She's on the hood of her car. And that's when she 
goes through the brush and she sees it's the water. she's on the mm-hmm. beach, yeah. And she sees um, this boat with three guys on it, and she starts taking her clothes off and walking into the water. And then we don't see what happens here. What we see is her all wet, driving away, crying. So, do you think that she slept with those guys, or do you think she didn't? I think because she slept with those guys. If she intentionally slept with those guys, is she not doing the same thing that Hugh did to her? She is, yeah. And I think she did sleep with those guys. It's ambiguous. Um, so we see her driving away and then she comes back home and she does get a little bit of time. So I guess she probably did, but it's not clear in the movie. Okay. So this is when Paul comes to talk to her and Paul says that she can pass it on to him. Paul, this is the scene where I don't like Paul because she comes back from the the lake. She's covered in water. She's very visibly upset. Oh, and he tries to like kiss her. Yes. What are you doing, Paul? And is like, I could have taken this for you. Read context mm -hmm. clues, you nerd. I I think he's immature. I think he doesn't quite understand. And he wants to help. And he wants to feel like the man that can help her. And he's jealous of Greg because Greg is the first one. Yeah. Yeah, But what we see is that Greg didn't save her. Greg ended up dying. So it's better. Better. And you should be scared of this. If you're not afraid of this, it's because you're not trying to really understand what it is. And that's why I don't think Greg took it seriously and he ended up dying. Bad haircut Paul is like, you know what you should do? Is lure it to the, the shit out of it. <laughs> yes. And so they drive. Let's go to the neighborhood YMCA. But it's not the neighborhood YMCA. It's a long way away in like downtown Detroit. Okay. So then they sneak into this. It's, it's an Olympic sized pool. It is. It's an Olympic sized pool. It looks like some kind of training facility for a pool or something. And they talk about how they used to break in there in high school and drink. So they knew how to get in. And so they do break in and they take out like all of their electronic appliances and they just like. Yeah. They show up there with four suitcases and then they have a thousand uh, like T. TVs and toasters and hair dryers and shit. And lamps. Yeah. And none of them, do they ever plug any of yeah, them in? Yeah, they're all plugged in. They're all plugged in. All of them are plugged in when the it comes in and starts throwing them at Jay. Couldn't you have just like plugged in an extension cord and throw them all in the pool? Or just a shitload of extension cords. And then just like cut the end off and like yeah. throw it. Yeah. It's just a real bad movie, guys. I it's, don't think oh. it's a bad movie. I think this part of, I don't like this part. I though. don't like this movie. And this, this kind of bugs me. So they're all, she's in the middle of the pool and they're all just hanging around waiting because they have to just wait for it to show up. It comes in, she's freaking out in the middle. She's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And then Paul's like, just point where it is and we're going to do our best. And then she's like, it's not coming in the pools. And they say, what does it look like? The sister says, what does it look like? And she says, I don't want to tell you. And then we see what it looks like. And it looks like a man. And if you're looking at the pictures on the wall in their house, it looks like their father. I did not put that together until just now. If I hadn't done the research on this, I wouldn't have. So no. instead of getting in the pool, it starts throwing toasters at her, which is yeah. Yeah. Weird but funny, kind of. And then he throws it. He throws a chair at her like it's the WWF, like <laughs> yeah. it's a Royal Rumble <laughs> or some it. shit. And then she starts bleeding. And it finally does get in the pool when no, Glasses this- Girl puts the bl- or the sister puts the blanket on. Yeah, because Daphne the- gets shot by Paul, who's a fucking idiot. Well, that is established. He's just shooting very at something invisible while there are other people running around in the type of room where a bullet might ricochet and I hit, which like is what Paul. happens. So smart sister takes a blanket and then blanket. puts it on the on the and goes. so you can see the outline and I did like that I, I thought liked that it. was it a was cool, a cool scene the special effect was good Paul yes. runs up shoots it in the head and yes. then it falls into the pool. So yes. then, and then uh, and so Jay's she's, freaking out. She's trying to get out of the pool as fast as she can. And then right when she's about to, she stops moving and it's grabbed her foot. And mm-hmm. I kind of like this too because they can't see. They just see that she's stuck in the water. And then uh, <laughs> Paul just starts shooting into the water and eventually gets him. So then he lets go and she swims out. And I think the plan is stupid and they are lucky that Paul did not shoot every single one of them but I think this scene is cool and effective and I like it. Yes I think if this movie was more of stuff like this I think it would have worked better. This is when they try to figure out if it's still in the water because they can't see anything it just looks like the pool with maybe a couple of bullets in See she makes Jay makes the smart decision of slowly crawling to Mm. the edge of the pool she doesn't see it she just sees a bunch of the water turn into blood. Yes Oh, the next thing we see is she sleeps with with Paul. So right. I don't think she believes that she actually got it either. And she's on top, which I think is meant to show us it's... No, um, I mean, I, I think that's a good... I think it is the first time that she's on top sexually. But I mean, yeah. Paul has asked for this the whole movie. I he don't has. think she, I don't think she oh, was no, like she raping him or anything. Oh, no, she didn't have him at all. But yeah. I think that she... Yeah. It was for sure her idea to do it then, but mm-hmm. it was his idea to do it 
30 days ago when this whole thing started. Oh, and this is the do you feel any different conversation that they have, which is a conversation that you would have after your first time having sex, but it's also a conversation that they're having now. Do you guys think this was Paul's first time having sex ever? Yes. I do. Yeah. Paul's 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> have a seat right here. But I also- <laughs> Someone get Chris Hansen. <laughs> I, I think it's on two levels because it's also saying now we have this shared burden and do you feel different because you he knows what he just bought. Then we see him driving up to some sex workers and we don't see it, but it is implied that he passes it off to the sex workers. And then it cuts to them walking on the street with it following both of them. Yeah, holding, holding hands. hands. We see a red jacket, which has alerted us that it is around No, the we corner. see it walking behind them. There, we it's see like somebody red, walking yeah. behind them and I think it's pretty clear that it is yeah. it. So that's... That he's, he's sharing the burden of this with her and that she's opened herself up to this right and, and that's that's why I don't like this movie I like the metaphor because I feel like some of the parts were really good in the metaphor but I can't buy the end because parts of the metaphor were so poorly done leading up to the end yeah like here's what I'll say about this movie like in general I like the metaphor I like what they were trying to say and in the hands of someone who can actually tell a good story this could have been a very good thought provoking movie I feel like some idiot had a decent idea or stumbled on this creating this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just executed so poorly, scene after scene after scene, that the premise gets people through it and gotten enough people talking about it that it sort of hit pop culture in a way that a lot of people saw this movie. But it really could have been like a get out for sexual assault. It, oh, yeah. But absolutely. it didn't, and it's not because it's not executed. I told totally by well. you were like they're dying like two seconds after the movie yeah. ends. The metaphor I like and I wish it was done better because I just didn't buy it at the end, like the, the how it all wrapped it up. I saw what it was trying to do, but it didn't go into the metaphor enough leading up to yeah. it to to really execute it all the way through. And, and I think it was really groundbreaking in that like no one's really tried to touch this subject that much like in this kind of way. But I wish it did it better because because uh, when you look back in the end, there are pieces missing that make me not believe the Paul and her walking hand in hand, happy ending style. Yeah, I feel like if they had put this in the hands of someone who could actually write and direct, it could have been an awesome, earth shattering movie. And instead, it's just sort of a poorly executed, interesting, thought provoking premise of a movie. No, but I do think it's important because no one really touches this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could have been sort of like a get out. It could have made waves like get out. But for sexual assault. But it doesn't because it's not a good, it's, it's very poorly executed. I don't necessarily think it's that he is not a good writer and he is not a good director. You might think that. I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason is he did not have that as the full concept of what he was doing as he was doing it. Yeah, I that's think, what makes someone a bad writer and bad director. Well, no, but I, I understand what you're saying. he was going for something and I think there he didn't realize how much underneath was and he didn't make it what it was because I don't think he realized what he could is have done Is that what happened? He, he was not trying to make a metaphor? I don't know. Look, I don't know him. I don't know for sure what he was trying to do. The interviews that I've read with from him lead me to believe he did not intend for it to happen. So he just thought this would be a really creepy thing that happened. Well, yeah, he had apparently had dreams about being followed, and I think he was trying to make an STD metaphor, but I don't think he quite understood exactly what he was doing, and that's why I think some of it feels like it doesn't quite work, you know? And mm-hmm. so when I'm looking at this, I don't need every single piece of it to line up for it to be effective for me, because the scenes that are effective are really really effective. But don't you think it could have been a good movie? Like it could have been an amazingly good thought provoking movie and it's just not. I do think it's a good movie. I think it could have been a fantastic movie. And I do think what this movie gets right and why people were really into it was not really because of the metaphor. I think it's because of the creepy atmosphere. It was a different type of scary movie that we than we were seeing in 2014. I think it was kind of a slow burn, scary, consistent creepiness without really any jump scares. And I think that is effective. Um, and I think you can enjoy it without really reading too much into it also. Um, when this was the movie that got picked. I'm not crazy about this movie. I think it's effective. I have not gone back and visited it. And I didn't, when we were talking about it, I was like, I don't know if I see that as a movie where the woman is very empowered. And I think the reason that I felt that way is because I was looking at Jay and I was thinking she was weak. And I was thinking she didn't overcome her monster. She didn't fight it. She didn't win. She didn't have that really empowering moment. And I think the reason that I felt that way about it. I was judging her. I was thinking she was weak. And I think it's because that's the way I feel 
about myself. And I see, I don't think I saw this in the movie the first time. I just had this underlying feeling of, I don't like this character because I feel like when I watched it the first time, I was really deep in denial about all of this. Um, And so I was kind of not excited to watch this. I'm glad that I did because I see a lot more in it. And what I see this time is she didn't have the really empowering moment where she stabs the killer or she she picks up the knife. What she does, the empowering moment is when she walks down the when she walks down the street holding hands with Paul because what she's doing, what she's empowering herself to do is open herself up to something, to somebody else and to let herself hold hands with somebody else again and not be afraid that this person is going to betray her again. And so I think that is the empowering moment of the film for me. And that's why I enjoyed it a lot more this time. It was still really hard for me to watch. It's been hard for me to talk about. I really appreciate both of you and I appreciate everybody who's listening bearing with me to talk about this because I did want to talk about it. And I wish that when I had been going through all of this, somebody had been talking about it that I heard because I think maybe it would have made it easier for me to talk about then. So if this is it, something that's happened to you, there's nothing wrong with you. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't blame yourself and talk to someone. Yes. So thank you for listening, everybody. If you do want to talk to somebody and you feel like you need to talk, there's a national sexual assault hotline and it's 1-800-656-4673. All right. Box office. (laughs) So this movie costs $2 million to make. It costs how many dollars? $2 million to make. And it looks like it. (laughs) It is very low budget. It made $23 million. Yeah, yeah, it got a lot of... It's got a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, I think. Is really? that true? Jesus it Christ, is. this movie's so bad. Okay, so mm, when like it did it. come out, all the critics <sighs> loved on this movie because of the metaphor. And it, the fact that he didn't even try to make it the... he didn't, uh, It's like a betrayal. I don't think there's a lot of love for the metaphor. I think the love immediately was because of the creepiness and I think the way it was shot and I think that was effective. I didn't, when I was researching this, I saw STD, 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 STD. I only found one fantastic article from Bloody Disgusting, which I will link also, that talked about how this is about PTSD from sexual assault. But even even the STD metaphor doesn't Hold up, hold up. I mean, like... It does and it doesn't. That's the only metaphor that does hold up. Right, well, yeah. That's the only metaphor that's on the screen. Right. Everything else is read into. It's yeah, like people projecting it, their stuff onto the movie so they can... To help them talk about it, to help them work through it. Which is not a bad thing, but it's not what the director shot. Um, I have one fun fact. I've kind of hit on the rest of them. The theater that they go to is a real theater in Detroit, and it was the theater that the original Evil Dead premiered at. Oh, that's a good fun fact. I know. Those are all my fun facts. So, whoo, listeners, this was, this was a heavy episode. Um, but this is a heavy movie, and I hope that we did it justice for you. Um, I appreciate you suggesting this. I appreciate all of the support. We're working on the next listener request that's probably going to be happening sometime in March, so make sure you're staying tuned for information about that. Oh, Scary Scale. Yeah, well, Jan, what is a Scary Scale? Listeners, our scary scale is a scale where we rank how scary we thought the movie was. It's not a scale of the quality of the movie. It's how scared we were when we watched it today. Our one example is Ghostbusters, and our 10 example is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, Todd, what you got? I'd give it a three. It is overall very creepy, but there are no jump scares, which I appreciate because I hate jump scares. But And I can usually handle the creepiness factor, but this is really creepy. Eerie. Is probably a better way to describe it, and not just because it is a great lake, uh, <laughs> but it is um, really an eerie movie. The atmosphere is effective. I do think the atmosphere yes. is effective. And oh, oh, another fun fact I had about that: he shot a lot of it on wide-angle lenses, and I think that's kind of where that comes from. I don't know exactly what most of that means, but I think that's why it kind of has that look to it, Mikey. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to give it a, a thing of three, like Todd, because uh, I I do feel like. The creep factor is there. The scenes where they fought it or it was a like a tall, a tall, creepy guy or a little boy worked and was really creepy. I wish there was more of that in the film. Um, but, you know, it wasn't very, very scary. I agree. I think it's very atmospheric. I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a five for 
reasons that if you've listened to this episode, I probably don't need to elaborate on anymore. So that's it. <laughs> so next is, oh, you know what? We're really going to scare the shit out of Todd. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't get a break. <laughs> no, you got a break. We got a strong. You uh, did Happy Death Day and this, which weren't scary. We're continuing with the f- oh. Women in Horror Month theme. We're talking about another really strong fe- female character in a movie. We're going to watch The Conjuring. Which is two strong female characters. Yeah. I hated the trailer for The Conjuring. The Conjuring if is. If you haven't seen the Patreon trailer, man, really it is. <laughs> Next level bonkers. <laughs> this movie scares me, so I think you're gonna like this. Ain't gonna be great. For I'm you. very terrified of this movie. I'm I'm gonna be less scared watching it with you because I like watching movies with you because it makes me laugh watching you react. But I like hid my eyes in multiple scenes of this movie when I saw it. Oh, I plan to. I'm gonna wear a big hoodie. Let's All right, guys. So if you want to follow us, do so at Horror Virgin on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to follow Mikey, it's M Randolph twenty four on Instagram and Twitter. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh Nailed my gosh. It. Did you guys see that I've been Twittering? I've been we like, did see. I've been yeah. doing it. You've been doing He's it, doing buddy. It. <laughs> I like send I send Todd like questions too. Like, I'm like, real proud of you. I'm like, what is what does that mean? Yeah. He's like Todd explained mm-hmm. Twitter to me a while ago. Todd, where did Twitters come from? When a mama bird uh-huh. and a daddy bird love each other. <laughs> uh-huh. A tweet is made. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's really sweet. If you want to follow Jen, it's at Jen Ferratu on Twitter and Instagram. And I am at Todd J also on Twitter and Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, but I never use that profile. But we do have the <laughs> Facebook profile. Honestly, we started a Facebook group. Yeah. But it's a closed group and I haven't invited anybody. So hey. if you search <laughs> if you search the horror virgin uh, group, you'll find it. It's but just no me one's and Todd in it. Yet. Like talking about, you know, like <laughs> what snacks we like. Yeah. I think I'm gonna spin, I'm gonna try and spin that up soon, but it's under construction right now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. stay tuned for details. But if about you wanna it. if you wanna be one of the first ones in there, just request an um, access and I'll give it to you. Whatever. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you guys have any emails, uh, email info at horrorvirgin.com. Um we're a member of the Modern Horrors Podcast Network, and if you wanna check them out, it's at Modern Horrors. Uh, they have a lot of great shows. They have uh, Death, Dying, and Other Things, Final yeah. Girls, and of course, the Modern Horrors flagship podcast. And if you're listening to us in their feed, make sure you subscribe to us because you can get our episodes two days earlier. Someone listens. Yeah, you heard us talk- Mondays instead of yep, Wednesdays. Exactly. I do listen. And you heard us talking about their movie that they're crowdfunding right now, God Country. So yes. make sure to check out information about that. Do we talk about our website? Because Mikey today asked me where we buy our own merch. So if you want to buy some merch, you can really go to the website. <laughs> are no stupid questions, Todd. Really, Mikey? <laughs> you can find that, Mikey, on our website at horrorvirgin.com. Sorry, it's not at horrorvirgin.com. It's just horrorvirgin.com. We also have a blog there. If you would like to talk more or read more about the type of episode we had today, I got a lot of blogs about this subject. Go for it. Check it out. Hey, guys, thank you. We love you, listeners. I'm Jen. I'm Mikey. And I'm the Horror Virgin Todd. We'll see you next week. (laughs) Have a great week. Bye. I'm going to find a catchphrase. Nerds. (laughs)